dear students in the module DPP 1501. The name of this module is Diversity, Pedagogy and Practice. You are uh, listening to the primary lecturer for the module. That is uh, Dr. Mayahabo Kate Malatela. Today, I want us to look at the module outline or the module overview. Um, this module DPP 1501 will help you to understand that learners in your classroom are quite diverse. Uh, you will also understand that learners differ in terms of abilities, language, cultural background, and so forth. And this module will also help you to understand that inclusive education in entails a shift from one size fits all approach to differentiated teaching and learning, which should be practiced during the teaching of all subjects. You will also be able to understand that you um, uh, I, you will be able to identify uh, various students with um, different barriers to learning, especially in your classroom situation. Now, looking at the learning unit for this module DPP 1501, the study guide that has been prescribed for you or that has been uploaded on the system for you is organized into four learning units. Learning unit number one is about diversity in the classroom. Whereas learning unit number two is about policy and legislation in inclusive education. Learning unit um, number one, which is about diversity in the classroom, will help you to explain the pedagogical relevance of the knowledge of disabilities. And at the end of the uh, learning unit number two, you will be able to discuss policy and legislation in order to demonstrate understanding of issues of inclusivity. We continue with the outline of the module. Um, now looking at learning unit number four, or number three and four. Learning unit number three is about barriers to learning in inclusive education settings, whereas learning unit number four is about modification of the curriculum. At the end of um, learning unit three, which is about barriers to learning in inclusive settings, you will be able to discuss how barriers to learning can be identified, supported and accommodated in a variety of inclusive settings. Learning unit number four is about modification of the curriculum. At the end of this learning unit, you will be able to understand how the curriculum can be modified to cater for all the learners. Now, looking at the assessment for this module, you will realize that in the tutorial letter 101 for DPP 1501, there's information about the assessment plan for this module. This module is offered on a continuous assessment mode, and there is no formal examination for this module. I used to receive some emails from the students inquiring about the examination timetable, when do I write the examination and so forth. So kindly be informed that there is no examination for this module DPP 1501 because it is a continuous assessment module. The module has four compulsory assignments of which assignment number one should be submitted online or rather I say all the assignments are submitted online, but assignment one is, is uploaded for you as quiz on the um, my UNISA, my module site. So we have assignment number one, assignment number two, assignment three, and assignment four. 
The fifth assignment um, is optional and must not be submitted if you have passed assignment number two, three, or four. Please understand this clearly. You don't have to write and submit assignment number five if you have passed assignment two, three, or four, one of these. Five uh, is what we call the optional assignment in other ways. So this, this assignment number five does not apply to the quiz as assignment number one. In other words, multiple choice assignment number one cannot be replaced by assignment number five. If you did not perform well in the quiz assignment number one, you are not going to write and submit assignment number five in order to replace the assignment, the first assignment or the first multiple choice assignment. I think, or I hope this is clear to you. So assignment number five can only be written and submitted online in case you have failed either assignment number two, assignment number three or four. I think I've explained enough. All right. Assignment, although assignment number two or three, number two, three, and four or five are included in the tutorial letter 101, we will still post them individually on my UNISA, my module site. Please check in each assignment shell. When it is time for you to work on assignment number two, just go straight to assignment shell for number for assignment number two. Then when when it's time to work on assignment number three, you just go straight to the assignment shell number three. That's where you will find the assignment being uploaded in this shell or in all the shells. Um, they carry the relevant assignments for for that assignment share right assignment number one which is the quiz assignment assessment which is a multiple choice assessment must be accessed on my unisa my module site like i said before it is not included in the dpp 1501 tutorial letter 101 you will not find the quiz assessment number one in the tutorial letter but it is uploaded online for you to work on it. Please note that assignment number one, which is the quiz assessment or multiple choice assessment, will be marked by the learning management system, not by lecturers or markers in the module DPP 1501. Please also note that once the due date for this quiz assessment has been reached, um, that is the 25th of, of April 2023. The learning management system will automatically close and will not allow extension for submission. Now, looking at the study material, the official study material for this module, um, this module consists of the study guide and the tutorial letter 101 for 2023. Please read the contents of the study guide. Familiarize yourself with the contents of the study guide. And please remember, the study guide is there to guide you. Don't rely solely on the study guide. It is just a tool to guide you. You must search for more information on the like we have the, the list of recommended readings in your tutorial letter or even on e reserves So you, you, you must read further besides the study guide. You must find other sources of information. Um, we also have tutorial letter 101 for 2023, which, is con which contains all the information that you need. Every question that you may ask yourself, the answer is in the tutorial letter 101. 
So it will help you to know about this module. And it also contains the lecturer's contact details, as well as the recommended readings and many more. So the lecturers for this module, um, or the lecturer's contact details for this module are found in the tutorial letter 101, like I said before. And the lecturers for this module are Dr. M.K. Malatela with the email address as reflected and Dr. M. Chauke with the email as reflected as well. You can also find these details in the tutorial letter 101. Please read the whole uh, all the contents of the tutorial letter from page one up until the last page to avoid sending us emails to ask questions that are or that have been answered in the tutorial letter. OK, communication with the with the university or with your lecturers. You can contact the lecturer in the following ways. Right. You can contact your lecturer by email. And in this case, we, we, we prefer that you use my UNISA My Life email address only. Personal email addresses are not allowed. We may not be able to respond to your queries if you use personal emails. You can also contact your lecturers through the telephone number. This telephone number that is displayed here is for the primary lecturer for this module, Dr. M.K. Malatela. So the number is 012-481-2755. Always have your module code, your name and student number handy in all your communication with the lecturers. Right, what do, you, what do we expect from you in this module? We expect the following from you. We expect that you respect fellow students and all academic and non-academic staff members, or simply be polite in your communication. I know, I understand that sometimes uh, certain, certain situations can make you angry and so forth, but please try to be polite in your communication so that you can be helped. Submit assessment tasks on time to avoid disappointments. It's very, this is very, very much important. Don't wait until the last minute, then you start working on your assignment. Submit, work, work on your assignment on time and submit before the, the closing date. The third one, third point that I want to emphasize here is that do not plagiarize. What do I mean by plagiarize or plagiarizing? To plagiarize is to copy someone's work and submit it, claiming that it is your own work. Please maintain academic integrity. You don't copy someone's work and submit it as if it is your own work. Try to do your own work. That's how you learn. Do your own work and submit it. And always remember, especially with assignment uh, number two, three, four, and five, which is optional, always remember to complete the, 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 the declaration of honesty form. It is, it is, uh, this form is inserted in all the assignments for you to complete. Remember to complete this form before you submit. And please do not separate the form, the declaration form from the work that you are submitting. Just include this form in your assignment. Don't submit separate documents. S include the, the declaration form in your assignment before you upload it um, online. And please remember, we, we, we prefer that all assignments or all documents be uploaded in PDF format. Do not send your assignment to, to the lecturer through the email. 
if you do this, your assignment will not be attended to or it will not be marked. Please always remember to submit your assignment online. Secondly, do not encrypt your, your PDF assignment with password. Never ever use a password or, or lock your assignment with a password when you submit, because this will, will, will make it difficult for the markers to, to, to grade your assignment. Submit your assignment on or before the closing date, I repeat, because extensions may not be granted. It's very, very much important that you submit before the, the closing date or before the due date. OK, now looking at learning unit one, I'm just giving you an overview of the module um, itself. So learning unit one of this module, DPP 1501, is about diversity in the classroom. Now the question is, how do you define diversity in an inclusive classroom? Diversity entails meeting the needs of diverse students and creating a welcoming classroom environment where all students feel safe, valued and respected. And you, you can even give your own explain or your own definition of the word diversity. That's fine. As long as it can carry the weight, it can show us that um, it is a way of um, uh, creating a welcoming classroom environment to, that or the, the, the environment or teaching and learning environment that can accommodate all students, regardless of their differences. Now, looking at diversity, again, learners in the classroom differ regarding behavior, learning styles, uh, family backgrounds, language and cultural backgrounds, pace of learning, physical makeup, cognitive abilities, race, ethnicity, social competencies, attitudes, and many more aspects. So this is uh, how we have a diverse student uh, in, the, in the classroom, in, in an inclusive classroom. So you must always bear this in mind that we have diverse students in our classrooms. Some of these aspects are clearly visible in class, while others require careful observation. So when you will be teaching the, the learners in the classroom, you will, you will notice these differences amongst your learners. Please read more about diversity in inclusive classroom from your study guide. You may read uh, from page one to page five and learn more about this concept from other open education resources such as the following. Um, I've just uh, cited one example of uh, the reading, recommended reading that you that talks more about diversity, which is guidelines for responding to learner diversity in the classroom through curriculum and assessment policy statements. So this has been published by the Department of Basic Education in the year 2011. This is very, very much important. Uh, if you can go through this document, this policy document, you will learn a lot about diversity in the classroom. Now, uh, defining inclusive education. Um, you must understand that uh, the, the course that we have enrolled for, or this module that we have enrolled for, is about inclusive education, or it's one of the modules in the Department of Inclusive Education. So what is inclusive education? Um, you know, inclusive education can be um, defined in different ways. If you can check uh, from literature, you will find out that many authors define the word inclusive education or the concept inclusive education in different ways. 
So in your study guide, um, inclusive education is defined as involving changes in content, approaches, structures and strategies driven by a common vision that covers all children and the uh, conviction that it is the responsibility of the regular system to educate all of them. It is a basic right or a basic human right. So please read further uh, about inclusive, the concept inclusive education. You can define it uh, another way around, the way you understand it. That is why I, I, was, I, I said that there is no single definition of inclusive education. As long as you can understand what it means, that's okay. So you can also read from the policy document, which is called Education White Paper 6, page 16, section 1.4.1. It will tell you a lot about inclusive education or inclusivity. Please search more definitions of inclusive education from open education resources and general articles on the internet to enrich your knowledge about inclusive education. Please also cooperate with your e-tutors and create time to work on all the activities they give to you. This is very, very much important. Um, earlier on, I've made mention that um, diversity in the classroom will reveal uh, that there are certain barriers to learning that the learners are experiencing in the classroom situation, or they, they, they have them, they are inborn um, barriers to learning. So a barrier is an obstacle or circumstance that impacts negatively towards the learner's learning. So in this course or in this module, we have um, divided the, the, the barriers to learning into intrinsic barriers and extrinsic barriers. Intrinsic barriers are those that are within the learner or the innate ones or those that the learner might have been born with. And then on the other hand, we have extrinsic barriers, which are the barriers from the learner's environment. So we're going to explain these two uh, uh, different types of barriers uh, um, in a nutshell in the next slide. Now, looking at um, intrinsic barriers, this refer to the factors that are situated within the learner. These factors may include, but are not limited to conditions such as neurological impairments, which can include, um, for example, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, and so forth. Physiological or mobility impairments. Um, this may include persons with um, mobility disabilities due to chain uh, muscular dystrophy, and so forth. We don't say disabled persons, but we say persons with disabilities because a person comes first. So it's only that, uh, some, some circumstances that form impairments or that form disabilities to, to this person, but a person is very, very much important. So never say a disabled person, but a person with disability. Okay, we also have intrinsic barriers which are related to intellectual impairments. In this case, you will find that in the classroom situation, you have learners that have difficulty reading maybe reading literature books and so forth, or spelling learners with spelling problems. And these learners are in most cases classified as those uh, living with uh, intellectual impairment, such as dyslexia or dysgraphia. Dysgraphia is a, is a challenge or difficulty with writing. And dyscalculia, 
is a challenge or a difficulty with mathematics or math uh, calculations, mathematics, in fact. Uh, OK, we also have learners with behavior problems. Some of the teachers always wonder why, why is this learner? Why is this child behaving like this? Not knowing that some, some of the issues are inborn or they are intrinsic to the learner. Like for instance, we have this behavior problem which is called attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. We also have learners uh, with withdrawal behavior. They seclude themselves. They are withdrawn. And we also have bully or the bullies in the in our classroom situations. So it is very, very much important that the teacher must know all these different types of learners or the challenges that the learners are coming across on daily basis. Hence, the module is, uh, is named Diversity, Pedagogy and Practice. We also have sensory impairments, which are um, learning barriers related to hearing and visual impairments. So you can see that we, we really have a diverse learner population in our inclusive classrooms. So it is our responsibility as teachers to, to cater for those uh, learners, to accommodate them in an inclusive education, uh, learning, teaching and learning environment. Now, looking at the extrinsic barriers to learning, these are the factors in the environment that may impact negatively, negatively on the learner's learning. This may include the home situation. You know, the home situation can adversely affect the learning process of a learner in the classroom. Home situation like domestic violence, divorce of parents or lack of parental support. So this can negatively affect the, the, the learning progress of the learner. So it forms a barrier in the teaching and learning situation. We also have socioeconomic systems that are also classified as extrinsic barriers to learning. This include poverty or poverty stricken learners in our classrooms, parents' level of education, financial security, and so forth. And the school, syst the school system itself can also uh, be an extrinsic barrier to learning. For an example, you find that the school um, has an unwelcoming learning environment. The learning environment or, or the school built or the school setup, the school environment itself does not accommodate um, learner diversity. Those that are using wheelchairs, you find that they, they, they are not accommodated um, in the school system and so forth. So the curriculum itself, if it is inflexible, it doesn't accommodate the, the diverse learners. So the curriculum must be in such a way that it is accommodative of, of the diverse learners in such a way that the teacher is able to adapt the teaching and learning content, to adapt the, 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 the teaching methods, to adapt the assessment processes and so forth. But if the, 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 the curriculum is rigid, it is in, inflexible, it, is, it, it forms the extrinsic barrier to learning, which means it does not accommodate other learners. And such type of a curriculum is that the one uh, which is called one size fits all. Or the teachers will apply one size fits all methods of teaching of which is unacceptable, especially during this time and era. So we must really uh, change our minds. We must really adapt our teaching and learning content so that um, all the learners in the classroom are accommodated. OK, now looking at the pol inclusive policy and legislature. 
you will realize that every child has the right to basic education. The South African Constitution ma mandates the right to basic education for all learners in South Africa. This includes learners with disabilities, learners that have never been to school, and learners who experience other forms of learning barriers. We, we have the South African Schools Act, Act number 84 of 1996, which states that public schools must admit all learners and serve their educational requirements without discriminating against them. We also have this act stating that based uh, on, on this legislation, there was a need for an education system that would benefit all learners or learner diversity, that is inclusive education. And here we are, we are implementing inclusive education so that the learner diversity can be uh, catered for. Now, uh, still on policy, inclusive policy and legislation, um, we have the right to equality and non-discrimination. It talks about the right to equality and non-discrimination. Everyone is equal before the law and is entitled to the equal protection of the law without discrimination. Education system must accommodate diverse needs of all learners. It must limit unfair discrimination and ensure quality of education for all. That there must be the right to equality and the right to basic education. Still on inclusive policy and legislation, the South African inclusive education policies are, for example, I'm, I mean those that um, you can familiarize yourself with, please read, just read. Don't just scan through the documents, but read this policy so that you can be able to understand what inclusive education entails. So the Education White Paper 6, which is special needs, which is entitled Special Needs Education, Building an Inclusive Education and Training System, aims at the following, or the aim of Education White, White Paper 6. Number one, pursuing the holistic development of centers of learning to ensure a barrier-free physical environment and a supportive and inclusive psychosocial learning environment. Number two, developing a flexible curriculum to ensure access to all learners. I believe if you can read or go through the, 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 the Education White Paper 6, you will learn more about the aims of that document, that policy document. So other policies that are discussed in the study guide for module DPP 1501 include the following, which you must also familiarize yourself with. Um, these are number one, the policy on screening, identification, assessment and support. Number two, conceptual and operational guidelines for full service schools and resource centers. The third one, the South African Schools Act, Act number 84 of 1996. The National Curriculum and Assessment Policy Statement for Grade R to 12, and the Care and Support for Teaching and Learning Program. So please read these documents. You can find them in um, e reserves of the library, university library. You can also find them, even searching them from the internet, then you can still find them. Please familiarize yourself with these policy documents. This learning unit number two, which is about inclusive policy and legislature, further discusses the following, 
uh, it discusses a variety of international policies and legislation on inclusive education, such as maybe to mention but a few, the UN Convention of the Rights of the Children, the Education for All Declaration, the Salamanca Statement, and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So this, these documents are quite interesting. If you can read through these documents, you will have more knowledge about inclusive education policies and legislature. With this, I say thank you very much, and I hope you will find this module informative and rewarding. Let's meet again in the next presentation. Thank you very much.